we are the Road to Tarvalin, and we are about to watch episode three. That was so cheesy. We're gonna watch this Wheel of Time episode three together. Okay. We've already watched the first two together. We liked a lot. We liked a lot. There was a lot of things that we were super hype about. Some things that I was a little meh about. Feeling fair. good about the series. Yeah, I feel like that's fair. I don't want to love so, everything. So let's do this. I'm I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I'm like ready. where where everything ended up with like Nynaeve being like this. She okay. says, Where are my friends? Yeah, and your mouse is, is my in mouse, the middle again. It's on Daniel Henny's nose. This and is the only way again. I get to touch him. I'm just kidding. That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was creepy. Um, We're sorry, Mr. Henny. Right? I have nothing but respect for you. For reals. Um, <laughs> when she says it's for her friends, like she's looking for her friends, that surprised me. Like in the book series, she doesn't come after them because of close bonds of friendship necessarily. They're young people that have gone she, astray from her village. She comes after them because she sees them as her responsibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she has cared for these mm -hmm. young men and women since mm -hmm. they were children. Yeah. She has healed them of childhood illnesses. Broken She's bones, fevers. Yeah. So that kind of, like, where are my friends gives it a very different feeling. Yeah, know? but how, how else would they say it, I That's guess. just it, is I feel like it's the perfect way of mm. saying it. Like, mm -hmm. you lose any kind of ambiguity about how they all feel about each other, you know? They are her or at friends. least how Nynaeve feels about them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That particular wording I thought was telling. You know, it's like Maureen mm -hmm. saying that words have power. That was one of the very first things that caught me when I watched it. See, I like how they have dirtied her up. Like, she yes. looks like she has been through hell and high water. Exactly. I, I appreciate that. I don't want... And you know what? I bet they appreciated that. I bet they were like, please don't make me look like a princess. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm... like it's probably just like a type of makeup. Like, they've got mm -hmm. something that... I mean, I'm sure they didn't just be like, here's mud and like throw it at her face, <laughs> you know? Hey, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> now I, I want to know. Like, now I want to know. Do they actually use mud or do they use a makeup? I want to know. I'm sure it has to be a makeup. I when What if it was like I magic skin mud that just made them well, look they, even better? Well, they, I mean, they make all types of stuff that can go on your skin when I did a little bit of prosthetic makeup hmm. in school. Like, they have everything. They have vomit that can go on your skin. They have mucus. There's all kinds of stuff that they have that they can do. I'm just curious. It's the yeah. little things. I always get stuck on, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that's one of the things that you and I both kind of zero in on it, or like the details, the details that make it what it is yeah i just have questions for like hair yeah. and makeup department right yeah. now like so what what are we using here <laughs> wardrobe like i just there's so much already that's like layered into these episodes there's so much love in this whether people kind of recognize that or not like that's how i feel about it i like how he's really talking her down he's kind of He's being very gentle with her when he doesn't mm -hmm. need to be. It's, it's like, true. It's like a psychological maneuver. Mm -hmm. He's keeping his voice quiet. He hasn't reached for his weapon once. He, mm -hmm. We know Lan. Lan could disarm Nynaeve without even taking a deep breath to show that he was about to do it. Like, he's... he's I think he's, he's also kind of impressed because yes. later on he's like how did you find me yeah and she's mm -hmm. like i said you could ask but i didn't say that i was going to tell you <laughs> so i mean mm -hmm. do you think yeah. she's caught his eye in this moment even though that she's like kind of like holding him hostage with a trollic blade <laughs> well if he hasn't he's caught feeling her away? eye <laughs> i don't know i think he's impressed for someone to walk up and like Pull a knife on him. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Going back to New Spring. Yes, please. The last person that we know that has ever snuck up on land is Ooh. Moraine. 
in the end of New Spring. Oh, no, 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 no. She didn't sneak up on him. He was trying to sneak up on her. And she was like, excuse me, why are you following me? <laughs> I had it backwards. I had it yeah, backwards. I apologize. But, oh, the other thing I really like about Lan is like in the book, he's described as having like gray in his hair, like gray at the temples of his hair. Mm-hmm. And they've done that for Daniel Henney. And you want to know something? It does not take away one ounce of how attractive he is. You know what it I mean? It looks better. It does. I, mean, I like a little bit of gray, not going to lie. When you talk about it, like when you read it in a book, at least for me, especially when I was like 16 reading the books and them being like, he had a touch of gray Did you think hair. like he's an old like, man? Old man. Just to, to point out that like the things that we read are headcanon can be a really, really nice change. Oh, like, you actually tried to kill me. And then he knocks her unconscious. That happens. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he could have done that at any time, so it's just funny that it does happen. But she, like, lunges at him with a knife first and bites down on him, and then he's like, all right, there's, fine, pow. There's... There's no other way to contain Nynaeve. No. There's nothing. He would have. I mean, even if he, even if he wrapped her up and like tied her up Mm -hmm. so that she couldn't scream, Mm -hmm. like she she would just be tooth and nail and fury. Yep. I have not paused on the screen before. And when I watched Shatter Logoth. Yeah. I hadn't. I hadn't noticed that. When I saw this in the trailer, the uh-huh. still, you can see that there's a river on the mm-hmm. side of Shadar Logoth. Mm-hmm. When I saw it in the trailer, I thought that was all water. So I thought it was an island. And I was Me like, too. oh, Tarvalin Me too. looks wild. Yes, same. <laughs> the set design already is fantastic. It's fantastic. They say you're always leader. That's not how roads work. <laughs> But isn't it? (laughs) I mean, we are aficionados of roads and poorly using them. It's like the all roads lead to Rome kind of sentiment. It's not necessarily true, but it is true. It won't be home without them. This is one of the lines that when I was watching it made me think, Robert Jordan would have applauded reading that because what he does so well is create a sense of emotion and connection in very small amounts of paragraphs, words, moments. Like, yeah, he's wordy at moments, but there are other times where like a sentence just lands and you get an entire picture. This particular statement from Rand It won't be home without them, to me, says so much about how he feels about not just Egwene, but Perrin. So he has this really deep connection to them. And I like that it is to both of them. This established friendship, I think, is really important. They have conflict along the way already. There will be conflict that we will see kind of unfold. But there's also a very strong bond of friendship and home and in some ways family at some point soon reach this destination where they can all be like open and honest with each other yeah because in the books that doesn't happen Mm -hmm. in the books there is just miscommunication after miscommunication that's exactly what i was just thinking of frankly very frustrating yes i think as this goes on we're gonna see more moments where we can tell they're have a tighter connection maybe yes. and then maybe yeah. after these kind of like solo trips where the group breaks off mm-hmm. they'll be a little bit tighter afterwards mm-hmm. i think so too i think you bring up some excellent points and i don't think i disagree with any of them it just kind of feels like everything was so fast like mm-hmm. i don't know how attached they really are Mm-hmm. to their home well rand and parent bo- both seem to have a stronger uh, emotional expression towards the group mm-hmm. matt seems more practical for him it's all about getting home to his sisters like mm-hmm. these are his friends but at this point 
it's the friendship doesn't matter as much as getting home does. And Aguine is already showing that she's ready to take a solo path. Her intentions and her wants never really waver. Like she knows That's what she true. wants and it's pretty much just kind of like a straight shot. I mean, Rand even knows. Is she going to be portray- yeah, portrayed as so sure-footed in the mm-hmm. TV show? Fast they're, forward. They are it. literally on the road to Tarval and Amber. Yes, they are. <laughs> Isn't How it long dumb that that's it the first them? time I noticed that they're actually on the road to Tarvalin? <laughs> I love how it's filmed. I just love how it's filmed. This is what I mean when I say like they have like such a minimal opportunity for shelter. They are quite a bit dirtier than I had thought. I feel like they would <laughs> still be. And I mean, wet. cold and your hands are shaky and you're trying to like get this to go. Mm, this make, This hurts me to watch. Yes. I know the wolves, like, the wolf brother thing is going to be hard to film because, like, obviously wolves can't talk. Like, if they'll actually make it so that there's communication between Perrin and the wolves as opposed to, like, just this, the wolves kind of hurting and approaching. You know what I just figured out? Like, it just dawned on me. Like, I just had, like, a moment... Without Rosamond Pike, without Moraine and Lan around, this mm-hmm. feels very teen drama. Yeah. But then as soon as you add new characters like Tom, as soon mm-hmm. as Tom was involved, like mm-hmm. later on, I was like, okay, I'm like back in it. Yeah. Lan yeah. and Nynaeve, the chemistry, so good. Do you I think understand it's being... that they need Yeah, I was gonna say, do you think it's being done so that like the audience can be broadened? Do you know what I mean? They could be. I mean, like, of course you want to get, like, teenagers watching Mm -hmm. your show. Stylistically, like, Mm -hmm. I think the show looks great. I agree. Mm -hmm. I don't have any complaints about the landscape, the architecture. Mm -hmm. The sets are amazing. They are so good. So good. good. I just think for me, it's just a personal Mm -hmm. gripe, I -hmm. guess. That, Valid. Like, I like, yeah, I like to have this kind of knowing, wise, some mm-hmm. type of character around. Mm-hmm. Moraine, get mm-hmm. well again, please. Yeah. I do love this little cuddle. Right. Madeline Madden is so expressive. Her yes. face. I just, I, oh, I just want to squish it. She's so sweet. Yep. And then we go to this face. Mm-hmm. Fury. Mm-hmm. I love her. The look on Nynaeve's face when she heard Moraine whimpering. Mm-hmm. She had a moment from, you know, like the scowl to like mm-hmm. a moment of relax on her mm-hmm. face. And it just goes back to what you were saying about earlier. How Nynaeve is just at the very heart of her. Mm-hmm. Can't, she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't be able to not attend someone who's actually sick yeah and i think like it was just like a little subtle tell i liked it okay i love this scene back to the cinematography how beautiful is this (sighs) oh my gosh they do this they do this like panning Mm -hmm. Shot of Nynaeve where they kind of like go right around her, and it's so it's very it's romantic, beautiful. It's so it's... pretty. Yeah, she just gives them sass. I love I don't that. Have to tell you shit, right? But the yeah, set this... again, Tracy. The beautiful. little bottles and the little like all of the tiny vials. Like, look at that. The the linen like cloths mm-hmm. for wrapping wounds are right there. Like. Mm-hmm. If you ever wondered what Nynaeve's healing pouch looks like, this is beautiful. I just want want to live in this world. I really like how careworn and dirty Nynaeve's hands are. Mm -hmm. One of her fingernails is even a little bit broken. Yep, and a bit ragged. She obviously works with her hands. They didn't try to make her look all soft and delicate or anything like these small attentions to detail that aren't being glossed over she doesn't have a manicure you know she's she's dirty she's rough she's yeah she's the wisdom of Emmonsfield 
this is how she should look. You know? This is another spot where I thought they did a really good job of... Exposition. Yeah, like quickly done. I've heard about the bond that you We're feel gonna what show she you. feels. Ooh, ugh. Ugh. It's so bad. The water feels the pain of right. his that ice the ice and knife eye. feels. Do you think that Nynaeve is going to actually heal her like super fast on accident and it's going to be like a reveal? I don't know. Simply because <gasps> Okay, like... pause, 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 okay. pause. Ooh. The window. Did you see in the window? Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, yeah! So this is a Baalzaman dream. Mm-hmm. I'm just Definitely trying to think it. about what the significance of this dream is, because usually when we see Baalzaman or, like, hear that he's in someone's dream, he's mm-hmm. manipulating things. Yes. Mm-hmm. In a way to make sure that he's getting something out of it. But he tries to manipulate them. That's just yeah. kind of how he is. So I'm just kind of curious what... But Alzaman is creating this dream for mm-hmm. for Perrin. Is he trying to say like, "Hey, don't trust the wolves. The wolves mm. are bad," because he knows like they can guard his dreams? Mm-hmm. Or is he saying because Layla looks up to him and she says, "I know." Mm. Is it like this just to torment Perrin to be like mm-hmm. she knows that you're a killer? What a good question. This is creepy. Right? I am a bit confused about the wolf's behavior in Mm -hmm. this moment. Would, like, the wolves do Bilesamon's bidding considering how they feel about everything? No, absolutely not. I think Bilesamon implanted... Okay. Okay. So there's So like he created it like dream shard type creating. Right. Like okay. either Ishamael created this dream or there's the dark friend theory where the wolves are in the dream eating his wife because they're like, Hey, mm-hmm. she's a bad person, mm-hmm. but we can't tell you this. We mm-hmm. have to show it. Good points. Good points. Right? Now, in the books, the only reason why the wolves stop is because they don't like the Mastiffs at the Tinker Camp. Mm-hmm. I just love Barney Harris. Mm-hmm. I just... Oof. For this particular, like, version of Matt, I feel Barney Harris is doing a really good job. Yeah, it feels it feels very spot on. Well, and yeah. I mean, we had talked about wardrobe last time, and in particular, Matt. And like the clothing that he's wearing and how it's it's not really the best quality. And I mean, look at the look at the difference between what Rand is wearing and what mm-hmm. Matt is wearing. Like, I mean, maybe it only feels a little chilly because you're wearing a wool lined leather coat brand. <laughs> but yeah, is this is this the face? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <Sine Ranko. laughs> I love it. <laughs> His face is so good. That's it's so Ranko. expressive. His dialogue is up it's there everything. with my favorite. If it weren't for these scenes of them like wandering around and Matt being funny, it would have been hard. Right. And I think that's one of the good things about this is that like we got an opportunity to see Madeline Madden be really expressive in that moment with Perrin. We got to see mm-hmm. Marcus Rudd be emotional in that moment. Like we're getting a deeper dive into each character in each scene and i think that's i really like that this is kind of like replacing the four kings that's what i was thinking too yeah they've put an aiel like cage but i will say when we watched the teaser trailer together yeah and they were running Mm -hmm. i said i don't think that's winter night i think Mm -hmm. that's the four kings Mm -hmm. so i'm kind of right you are right yeah, you're in the because I think they kind of created this one location. We'll see what happens once they've like connected mm-hmm. with Tom. Like in some ways, this is almost reversed, where like they wheat they wheat Whitebridge, they meet in Whitebridge, and then it's Rand and Matt rolling solo because of what happens to Tom in Whitebridge, and now this time. They've started their journey. They're under attack. Tom comes to the rescue and joins them on the journey. 
do you think Tom's going to get knocked out of the picture again like he does in the book? I bet he gets them to Tarvalin, and then he's mm-hmm. like, I can't stay. And then we get Tom's backstory. Mm, that would be cool. And then he goes. This is why I like Matt. His humor is really similar to mine. A bit snarky, a bit dry, a bit poking at See, people. See, he notices yeah. some type of Jewel. gemstone. Mm-hmm. So that's what he's after. Mm-hmm. So that's one, I'm two, just, three, four, I'm, five, I mean, six. I'm, six arrows in that person's body? It's a lot. Is there graffiti on their windmill? No. Oh, it's, it's, painted. it's painted. It's like <laughs> one of these kind of, it's like these folk art symbols. Mm, I hadn't noticed. It's kind of small and I can't see. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't noticed the last It could time. just say this town sucks. <laughs> <laughs> in that case i suppose it would be considered graffiti how bare these wind panels structures are, are. Those... yeah mm-hmm. yeah like everything looks like it's kind of on its last leg that was kind of like the the storyline between four kings wasn't mm-hmm. it like it was just it, like it was just it established was just like a trading center like it was because it was at that crossroads and so much traffic came through it was really busy and like i know several of the places mentioned like miners down from the mountains and whatnot exactly like it's just really drab Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like this same feeling that i'm getting here set design very very cool okay yeah so it does look like it's water Mm mm-hmm Oh, it's coming down from the mountain. Though. Yeah, yeah. This does look like a friendly town. What is that? Right? Go back. Was that like a giant cat skull? Oh. Are we getting a wonder of the world? Is that a skull of an animal? I, you know what? I can't tell. It looks more like stone than it does bone. But at the same... But what would they be doing with it? Like, look at this rock. A relic hey, from, Marv. <laughs> from the time of legends or whatever? The age of legends? Yeah, I want more input on this. It yeah, does. It no, I totally of Bale agree. Doman. Yep. Mm-hmm. I found this thing. These wonders of the world. Yes. This... Okay, so I'm sorry. When Matt and Rand walk in here and that one guy accidentally bumps into them... Why didn't Matt know to check his pockets right away? And he did it so I, awkwardly. How come they... I picked up on the fact that that guy picked that other guy's pocket. It was terrible. And talk about an earworm. Did he make you think of anyone when you heard him sing? I just love the flash of the yeah. underside of his. No, he didn't. Okay. Did he, he sound like Tom Waits to me. Colors it makes me think of piano has been has been drinking. drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and having well, been told, I feel like he's scared that he could be the dragon reborn. Exactly. And he's hearing about exactly. him going mad. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the uh, like. Yes, yes. You read my mind. I like how she breaks the mood. It's like, let's drink. See this. This. This is the most awkward. Mm-hmm. I stole your shit ever. Yeah. <laughs> and then he steals it back. And he just steals it back. I love Hot Tom. Undercurrent. Is he using of kind. Matt's money? <laughs> uh, if he's not, he definitely pulls Matt's pouch out right now. Mm-hmm. Did you mention last time when we were, like, the first time that we saw Tom and you were like, is his jacket made out of corduroy? Were you yeah. the one that asked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was on. It, no, you. I think you said it. It definitely looks corduroy to me. I, I would wear that jacket. This mimics his cloak mm-hmm. in the books because at some point in the books, he flips his cloak inside out mm-hmm. so you can't see the patches, see the patches when he wants to go in stealth mode. Yeah. So, like, does this coat have the option where he can, like, flip it back around where he's, like, mm. in Glee Man, Ta-da! like, full? Yeah. I like, did like that little flourish. <laughs> You know, yeah, <laughs> sitting. This is me I sitting wonder if down. That's, maybe that'll get like choreographed into his knife flourishes. Ooh, like a... <laughs> I do like I do like the knife play that comes in later. I love that it's like just a yes. tiny hint of what we're gonna be getting. Yes. Like mm-hmm. maybe maybe Hot that's w what happens. Tom. 
Tom starts teaching Matt how to throw daggers instead of Matt being taught by Lan how to do other things. Matt doesn't really have a great father figure. Uh, and truth, they're kind of truth. like setting up this parallel, like older, more mature character for him to kind of like. I love that. I don't yes. want to say attached to, but like but bond mentor, with, like a mentor. Yeah. Yes. Because That's actually Tom takes that role in the books, but it's different. I, but I, I don't think know I how would to like teach without better. doing it, boy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exquisite. <laughs> This is totally an exquisite Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Actually, I can't tell you how hype I am for Tom. Just Well, and mentioning like the role that he takes for Matt and Rand and this idea of mentoring, I hadn't really noticed it before, but it is kind of a a reoccurring situation inside the book. Mm -hmm. I'm kind and of I... thinking that like the power of a mentor cannot be understated they can help you especially get in the series yes and i think that's what i was trying to convey about how like now they're all broken up yep and like i'm feeling frustrated with the young men and women on their own but then when you introduce tom mm -hmm. like it's just a whole yep. new experience and i feel like it's so much better yeah it feels like it just it so feels, it's so much more elevated yes and like condensed somehow like connected like instead of feeling like a like just floating along trying to figure your path out you have this individual a who, little bit of a guiding star exactly oh tom the guiding star that's a t-shirt he's quite the star <laughs> <laughs> shred and high chant <laughs> <laughs> that would make a great coffee mug. <laughs> that's that's it's Josh said that from the Black Tower podcast and I love it. Mm, I didn't maybe, come up with it on my own. Maybe we'll ask if we can borrow it. It's already been established that Matt's a thief. So it's yeah. like the thief out thief the, the master thief out thieving Has the been out thief. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Oh. <laughs> This this was the part where I was like, man, chapped lips, their faces look like kind of dry. I know I'd want somebody to hand me a moisturizer stash. She's got all the scraps. leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, she's got all the scraps. She just cut up pig feet, throwing it in a in a mm -hmm. pot. And she smells the beer to see if it's still like mm -hmm. drinkable and puts that in the pot too. That's a that's a dark friend red flag. Like the bad cook. <laughs> Oh. I don't get this. What is he saying? Is Matt like older is, women? Right. Like, is that what he's implying? That's what it feels like. I'm okay with that. Like, Certainly. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I just, I think it's with more rain. Like, yeah. This shot of hair and any Gwen, like, mm. that landscape is just so awesome. Good. I want to mm -hmm. know if that's Italy or somewhere in the Alps or like South Tyrol. Is that him? Is that his senses changing? Like he it hears something be. before she does? Could be. They, they're such ragamuffins. They kind of like stumble out like children of the corn. <laughs> I do love, is it Maria Kennedy Doyle? Is that her name? Yes. I yes. love her. It feels very culty. You know what though? The, the Tuatha'an kind of is. The way of the leaf. It kind of is culty. I like Perrin here. <laughs> yeah, we don't know the song. We don't know the song. I loved Egwene, though. She was like, tell him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, of course I know all of it backward, like, verbatim. But Perrin's like, we don't know the song. That would have been me, too. <laughs> she says they look awful, but they don't look like... That much different know. than they do? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> like... No, you look awful. These <laughs> wagons, they actually look a lot like I had pictured them in my head. Me too. You Me know? too. I love that Hands so down. much. I love it so much. But I can see where they have like attachments and things like that. Like it does make me think of a modern day camping setup. I mean, depending on how you and camp I and I want to eat that food. That looks right. great. 
I love I'm how hungry. they have everything all set <laughs> up for this. It's like a paella. <laughs> mm. I can make paella. How do you make paella? Okay, sorry. Bob's Burgers. Arm has beautiful eyes. He does. But that hair has got to change. So I'm... <laughs> it looks like a sideshow Bob. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> But you're not wrong. Um, I noticed that Rand has managed to keep his shirt on in the TV series. I was kind of wondering this if, like, the true. next moment he was going to, like... Be shirtless? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, like, in almost every farm they stop at, they both end up shirtless, you know? It's a real Western, huh? <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> It does almost have a more Wild West feel than medieval fantasy yes. feel, and I'm yes. digging it. This is where Tom reads everything about Matt. He's like, the way you talk, the way you act, you're from the two rivers. Boom. My Gotcha. Drop. Yeah, I loved that. Is this maybe one of those touches from book three that's being brought in? Yes. Okay. It's because originally Perrin finds... Mm -hmm. Gull. The captured Aiel Gull. He's mm -hmm. not dead. And what's like scary to think about is they Matt pulls a stone dog out of the Aiel's like belongings, and I think mm. Gull was a stone dog. So it's like, is this Gull? I hope not. Oh gosh, I hope not. So we learn that the Aiel are honor bound. Yep. Also. Tom has a level of casual comfortability, comfortability with corpses. <laughs> yes. But I think this is like one of those like real recognizes real moments where like yes. they're both a little bit seedy. Yeah. They've both been in dark places. Mm -hmm. Him turning his back so that Matt can do this. Like this whole Tom moment is just great. It really, really, really is. It's great for both of them. This whole Matt sisters thing, the more I think it accelerates his story, his growth, his development, his maturity as it goes on. Okay, general trivia. Many people believe that the wheel is a prison in which ages and lives are repeated over and over time without end. Because of this, there is a perception some have regarding their own choices and if they have free will. A solution to this perceived eternity is if the wheel were to break. Time would finally stop and souls would be free. So I love that they are giving this. That's incredible. It's a little bit, yeah, it's like a little bit of their own lore, kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. And I think this fits really well with her telling him, like, she's never had an opportunity to escape. Mm -hmm. she's stuck in this terrible dreary place and yeah, so yeah. that's why someone would become a dark friend because they think that their lives are just being repeated and this mm -hmm. cycle of awfulness and yeah. breaking the wheel might be the only option so maybe that's why she's like you're gotta go i have to bring you to the dark one to a shaman yeah. break the wheel yeah i love that you pointed that out thank you so much so we also like get now that hint that Bilesamon is in their dreams, but also giving directions to the dark or the dark friends. This is our first channeling. That's Ryan. what I'm thinking. Sherman Tank, Sherman Tank, Sherman Tank. <laughs> this, this. I like this part. I'm 3,000 years on. Shamiel. Shamiel. I love her accent. Me too. She's gorgeous. I also. love that. She's like, he wants you to save us. So now one mm -hmm. group is like, I want you to save us. And another group is like, I want you to save us. Get, Get her, her, Tom. Get her, Tom. Do it. Do Can't it. run a fade. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love, oh. she goes down like a brick. Yeah. Yeah, she Great does. Great acting. Great yeah. acting. East. East. Everyone needs to go east. East is good. East is good. I like Matt, who's like, east is good. East is good. Let's do this. This guy knows how to throw sharp, shiny objects. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stick with him. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at all those eyes of die. Leandrin. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're all sizing up Nynaeve right now, like feeling <gasps> what her capability is? I hadn't thought about that. So is Nynaeve riding Bella right now? That smug look between those warders, did you see that? But they're probably like trying to be like, look, show, showing off like we've got this false yeah. dragon in the cage. Yeah. Na 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 na. -na. <laughs> yes, like, exactly. Look what we did. <laughs> Take that. Good. If you like us, please subscribe. Follow us. Yeah. If do not, do whatever it is that you know. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs>